everybody. How are you all doing? I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Howdy. Hey, I'm Brian Drake. Hey, hey. welcome to a live top 10 and welcome that Brian is here. Brian Drake, famous worldwide magician and YouTuber. That's what they that's what they say. Yes, I, I am. He I am famous those for the YouTube or the magic. I'm confused. Well, I'm infamous for one. It's... Oh, so sorry. I I'm, not, last... I'm not going there. I'm not doing this. Just, yes, there's no, no give and take. It was all give, um, no take. I'm not. I'm not messing with that. I can't win that fight. No, man. Everybody well, loves Garcia. You, you you can, but anyhow. I look Welcome, bad Brian. no matter what is what I'm saying. <laughs> If you haven't seen our, our channel, Brian does many reviews on the channel. And so he gets the box of games. I send him one every once in a while. In fact, have you got the one I just sent? Uh, uh-uh, no. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, though. It's in the mail. I always send Brian the best of the best. Like yeah. What happens is we'll get a game, and I'll say, well, I want to review this. And Z says, I want to review this. And I'll say, the only way to break the tie is to send it to Brian. <laughs> right. And that's yeah. what happens. That's 100% not true. I, just, I would like to point that out because – I'm always surprised when I review a game out of the box and it is good. Like I'm usually like, oh, I need to do some negative reviews. Let <laughs> me pull one out of the box. Well, this time you'll be pleasantly surprised to find out it's just like every other box. Yes. All right. So um, today, folks, we're talking about our top 10 fantasy flight games. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is uh, this has been on the roster for a while. As as the year goes by next year, we'll we'll pick some companies that have a lot of games to do. And this just happened to be one. I know Brian likes Fantasy Flight, and I think Roy's uh, – well, you guys can't see Roy, but I feel like Roy's <laughs> placement of games in his video <laughs> feels yeah. very specifically honed. You can't see him, but uh, yes. Um, but Fantasy Flight. So I, uh, I, I gave myself a caveat here on my own list. I'm not saying you guys had to do it. Oh, here Uh-oh. we go. What now, did you now, do? I just said that for myself, I was only picking games that – are, as far as I know, originally from Fantasy Flight, uh, not reprints unless it was a substantial change. So, for example, Cosmic Encounter is not on my list. Right, I figured because that. Because Cosmic Encounter came out from Eon, and the Fantasy Flight, while it's a nice new version, is essentially the same game as that Eon one with minor changes. I am not that smart or that uh, hardworking to have done that. So I just I went and found the games that were have the little Fantasy Flight logo on the bottom of the box and was like, hey, that'll work. That counts. He just went through the shelves back there and the first yeah. 10 that had that logo made a <laughs> list. That'll work. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> well, I will tell you this. Fantasy Flight does not have a few games. There is a ton of games. Um, it was a considerably smaller list, though, when I did my... My, my rule, because they brought over a lot of games from Europe. Um, they've also re- mm. reprinted a lot of games from other companies for various reasons. But there's still some pretty big name games on my list, and I don't feel like um, I've cut myself short there. But it's also, well, I, had, I didn't want to do the whole Cosmic Encounter thing sure. again. I One had of a mine. rule of yeah. my own. Uh, my rule was nothing from them that is based on a film or TV show. Um and that really cut into the list. In fact, I only came up with seven. So I'll be sitting out the first <laughs> three picks you guys have. Uh, I definitely thought no, you were I'm just kidding. Say, I, I, uh, I, I, my rule was nothing from them and just stopped the sentence there. I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's I was a little confused. That, that's what I thought you were saying, too. Games like sound like they would be from Fantasy Fly Games. Uh, no, I, I realized making this list, I'm not a particularly big fan of what you would call the average fantasy flight game, as you'll discover in a moment. But um, if I'd gone with your list there, Tom, this wouldn't have worked out, I think, with your with your I, rule, I should say. I th- well, you might... There may be a game of my thing that you say, no, that definitely was something else. I, I shall tear into you like <laughs> tissue paper. If like that butter. <laughs> like butter in my hands, baby. Got it. That's a uh, say. Um, I, I think just for those people in the chat, I think Z was kidding when he said he cut out the movie IPs on purpose. Yeah. Right? I was kidding, yes. But a lot. But I don't like those games or have played heart, them though. pretty much for the most part. So they're not they're not on here. You'll see. I mean, like, I mean, there's like they have like 28 Star Wars games. I've played one or two. 
and I don't like them. So I'm serious about that and them not being on here. Wow. I feel like we just Fantastic. lost everybody. Well, let's get started and see what we have. Number 10. All right. My number 10 is from Come On, and it is uh, one of their best games. Uh, oh, no, wait. This is Fantasy Flight. Uh, okay, is, okay. My on. number 10 is going to be, let's go with Elder Sign. Mm, Elder just... Sign is my number 10. Wow, I thought this would be higher in your list, actually. Yeah, me too. Higher, you say? Uh, <laughs> it's on the list. That's good enough. <laughs> I only left off like two games. I was gonna say you disparaged them pretty hard, so I'm just yeah. <laughs> no. Elder Sign is uh, it's good. It's a little long, which again I could say about a lot of Fantasy Flight games. It's a little long for what it is, but it's a fun dice game. The expansions definitely helped make it a more thematic game. The original release is kind of abstract, you know. I mean, the the, the theme that's supposed to be a Cthulhu theme just isn't there. You're in a museum or a university or whatever library. And you were just sort of walking around opening books or going through the museum exhibits. It doesn't it doesn't read, right? It doesn't work out. The expansions took you outside of a single building. Now you can walk around the town going on an expedition to mm-hmm. Antarctica or something. And that works a lot better. Um, it's a lot it's interesting. Thing. I usually play solitaire. I uh, Solo or two player, you can play three. The game plays up to seven, though, which is crazy. Yeah. Okay. This that's like downtime in a box. The dice game. <laughs> no, no more than three, folks. But other than that, I I do like the game. I think it's a cool Cthulhu game that's different than the typical thing. So number ten, Elder Sigh. All right, my number ten. Uh, Wrong. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We're your... trying to get you into the dice tower. To help I was you saying, I feel like home. that was good. Yeah, I definitely felt at home from that. <laughs> so, cool. Nice. Number, my number 10 is also from the same Arkham Horror Files universe, which, I mean, a lot of their games are, and that would be um, Eldritch Horror. Eldritch Horror is a fantastic game. It's much more zoomed out of the uh, Arkham Horror Files games. You're not in a town. You're in the whole world, which is pretty far as zoomed out as you could be. But uh, you're zoomed out. You're going around the world, and you're collecting clues to hopefully defeat one of the great old ones and it uses the cards as a story method so if you're in like san francisco you'll take a card from this region and read the card with that um thing off of it anyway and you have to resolve that check and it 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 plays a lot like a actually a lot like elder sign but um a little bit more meat on the bone than uh that elder sign in my opinion (laughs) they're very similar if you like elder sign you'll like elder char yeah (laughs) yeah i don't know about that brian they're basically the same game they use dice like Cthulhu. It's like Arkham Horror, but a bigger scope and just as long. Even I though see. they promised me it would be shorter and oh, fewer a expansions. <laughs> you bunch of liars. <laughs> All right, can you can you like let that go? It's been years. I won't go. Let it go. Yeah, fine. All right. <laughs> My number Horror 10 sucks. Say that. <laughs> I just realized. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I was going to say I have no. Uh, Arkham stuff on my list, but that's not quite true. I know you've got one, there's um, no doubt. That would be nuts. That would be crazy if you had none. Well, Elder Char actually just missed my list. It it was number 11. Um, so, dude, you need to get, get some sugar in your... He's so mean today. <laughs> no, wouldn't sugar uh, compound the problem? Well, at first know. you feel great, and then once you crash, you'd be like, I hate all of you. Get out of here. Yeah, but yeah. if he could just hold off, if he could hold off in the crash till after the top ten's up, I don't care. I do like that the crash was really enticing to him though. He's like, oh, I can't wait to be mean again. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Ah, sugar. All right, <laughs> my number ten. Let's jump to the other major IP that Fantasy Flight messes around with, and that's Star Wars. Okay. And so oh. my number ten is Star Wars um, Armada. Oh. And, yeah, you know, this is a game that's hard to get to the table for me, mm-hmm. and it's about. It's almost, well, I guess I shouldn't say almost. It's not even really a board game. It's a miniatures game. Okay. Uh, it, but I, I picked this one over X-Wing. X-Wing is easier to teach people and it's easier to play. But Armada, I just like flying those big ships. I like the Star Destroyers. I like flying around the Mon, the Mon Calamari cruisers. And 
I like having that big, big stuff. And then you still have the little X wing zipping in and out. And you, you have to kind of slowly, it's not this fast maneuvering. It's more of a slow turning the ship around, trying to give someone a broadside. I also, the Imperial destroyer is my favorite ship there is, but I think it's a really good system. You Which agree? was the Imperial Destroyer yeah. thing? That's the Darth big, Vader right? ship. Yeah, the one at humongous. the beginning of Star Wars. Ba, 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 the big bone thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the pizza. Um, so I'm guessing... Uh, I agree with that. I like it better I, next week. I have to say, there's going to be four Star Wars games on your list, Tom? Three. Three or four? I think I he's mean, got two more. I think he's got two more. Okay, okay. So three in total. I'm, I, I'm. There might be four. Based purely on context clues of him saying he likes it better next wing means X wing is not on here, and there's only sure. a couple more. Yeah. You know. No, there's six more. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna say <laughs> Star Wars, and then just yeah. be finished. Star Wars, the board game. It'd be like uh, Spaceballs. Um, yeah. No, right. I agree. I like the slow moving ships better. All right. So Star Wars Armada, my number ten. Number nine. I know Z's number, number one. Nine. <laughs> you do? Yeah, I think everybody might know my number one, but no one's going to guess my number two. I'm not going to nope. guess your number nine. My I'm number nine. To number two. Oh, come on. Really? <laughs> what? Ch- 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 churlish. Uh, <laughs> my one my number chur- nine. Gets on this list, even if I didn't like the game, which I do like it, it gets on this list for originality alone, and that is Keyforge. Oh, is a yeah. slam dunk when it comes to what FFG is best at, and that would be printing that money. Keyforge is uh, making that bank, kids. And it's a neat game. It's very different. It's unique. The idea that you are playing a collectible card mm-hmm. game, basically, but you don't make the decks uh, later on. You you buy one out of the box. It is computer generated, has a computer generated name and combination of cards. You just play that. It's, neat. it's a neat concept. It's a neat idea. You know, the, the, the way it's sold, it's really, it's the same thing as buying a booster pack. That's not, that's not where the originality is. You don't even build a deck. That's not really where I see it. Where I see the originality is the behind-the-scenes computation that goes into generating a title, which is half the time nonsense, but whatever, and generating a combination of cards that should work, right? That kind of does something together. That's neat. And that must have been really difficult to figure out, so the, the math of that, the, the programming yeah. of that. But I dig it. I think it's a neat game. A lot of combinations. It's fun. It's silly. It's kind of lighthearted, which I enjoy. I, yeah. You know, uh, it's a it's a CCG you know, style game that isn't. It's not grim dark. It's kind of silly. So I I like it. That's my it's number. It's not nine. even a little grim dark. Do you know no, when the uh, the new expansion is supposed to come out? I thought. I mean, I think it was supposed to already have come out, and I don't. I don't know, and I really don't know. Um, I do wonder also what kind of legs this game's going to have, you know. Uh, oh, I think this I mean, is the last expansion. It's in mass coming. market now, though. It's in, I mean, it's in, like, uh, you know, places like Target and stuff. So, I mean, yeah. there's that. I'm sure it's doing very, very well, yeah. But anyway, that's my number nine, Keyforge. Cool. I figured you might have cool. it. Yeah, I totally forgot it. My number nine is a game that I, is actually not theirs anymore. So technically, this is the opposite of your rule, Tom, but I counted I counted anyway. Uh, this is a fantastic worker placement slash dice placement game called Kingsburg. I have the Fantasy Flight Edition. Kingsburg is a phenomenal game uh, in which you are... It's, it's a lighter worker placement with dice. You're rolling your dice, and you can only place... Uh, wherever you place them, you have to have that much on your dice or less, and you can boost that up with certain things. You collect your resources. You build your town. Uh, it's not much to look at, I mean, it's really just a kind of a board of 12 characters and you play or 14 characters you place your dice on. It's uh, it's fun, though. I mean, we we got my parents into playing this one. So it's it's lighter. It's an easier kind of um, it's easier to teach, but it's got a lot of variety and fun stuff to it when you're just because the dice alone. So I like Kingsbury. That's my number nine. I mean, you guys can give me give me stuff about that if you want. But I, no, no, I think Kingsburg, it's a good that's what made my list, except for my rule. But other than that, yeah, I made my list. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good pick. Mm, 
Would you say it's good enough to be on your list? Maybe I'm just saying. It's not going to be on my list. Uh, it would be maybe 15 or 16, something oh. like that. It's oddly specific. That's good. <laughs> Z does his to the to the end yeah. degree. Does his top 100 on every list. Right. You know, we, no, we, we it makes it on the list. It makes it on the list around that spot because of. Again, there might be like 10 more unranked ones that I would bother ranking. You know what I mean? Because yeah. many of them I just haven't played because I don't care to play. Oh, this game has this theme. It takes four hours. Pass. <laughs> Good. I don't show I'm up in at the with table. That, you know what I mean? Yeah. But so Ginsburg, on that note, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. my number uh, nine guy. is a game that could be a lengthy game. Here's the thing about my number nine. It would be probably higher on my list and most people's list if they had ever come out with an expansion for it. And it will never happen. And that's because my number nine is Forbidden Stars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forbidden Stars, the collaboration between Games Workshop and Fantasy Flight, where they made their big space game of Warhammer. In fact, okay. the Warhammer theme is kind of in a micro lens, which is something I'd like anyway. I like when you take a look back and everything's, you know, you're looking at stuff from a big end. And it, it's also one of the few games of this kind of genre, like a... a dudes on a map, people on a map type game where it's works with two people. Very okay. rarely do these work with two people. This one does. Has a bit of deck building. There's definitely obvious comparisons to StarCraft, which this was built on that, Little I guess, StarCraft engine. Man. Well, it's it's a Ish. really, it's so overdone that, I, I mean, you could see some similarities, but they're really different games. But I just like it. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot going on. It's fun to go after. You get to do some battles, space battles, land battles, and uh, upgrade technology. I just, I wish they, you know, I was looking forward to seeing some of the races like the Eldar. Oh, no, Eldar in it. I'm sorry, but uh, That's dark. the Tyranid. <laughs> the, the, no? Did I say Eldar? No, the Eldar in, no, they're in. The dwarves. I'm sorry, guys. The, the, I apologize. The, yeah. the Elder dwarves. That's no, the goblin. There's no, there's no dwarves. No, but I would have liked to have seen like the Tyranid or the Imperial. I, I would like to have seen these other things come in, and yeah. there was hints that that was going to happen, and then because the the two companies got a divorce, it just didn't work out. Yeah, that had a lot of potential. I mean, like the fact you said two players, that was huge. It was like it feels a little like Twilight Imperium for two, and that's that's kind of what was great about it. I think I like it best with two myself. Oh but yeah, it's, it's good. Forbidden Stars, my number nine. You've never played it with me. <laughs> it's four hours. Number eight. All right, my number eight is a game that has not been released yet. I like it, though. I got to play it. I've only played it one time, and it made it on this list. I don't think it would necessarily Wait, climb. How is it possible? How, yeah. What? I don't think it's going to climb necessarily any higher, but I am mentioning I've only played it once. This is Fallout Shelter, the board game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot that's them. Yeah. It got oh, pushed. you only played it once? I only played it one time. Yeah, I played there yeah. with you. Um, um, I thought I thought you took it home with you. Who has it? Oh, Roy. Yeah, never I mind. <laughs> I don't have it. No, I think it's, I would like to get a copy at some point. I think <laughs> that's over his um, shoulder. <laughs> but it's. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. This is a neat, small footprint worker placement game, basically action selection, whatever you want. That uses as inspiration that app that came out. You could play on your iOS device in which you would run a little Fallout shelter. And it's the name. Would you look at that? What but I, I really enjoyed the way this worked out. It was uh, it had a little push your luck. It had a little sort of, I guess, building up of your section of the vault and new places you would also incentivize or, you you, you know, you were trying to. Have other people come and visit your locations, you know, have have your section of the board operational. You would get baddies showing up and messing with your things. You could defeat them and get glory and victory points for that. It's neat. It does a lot with a, a small package, you know, and I, I found it fascinating. The more I played, again, my one play of this, but the more I played of that one session, the more enamored I became with the game. And I, I, I'm really excited to try this one again. Now, like I said... It was, I think, supposed to be out by now, but it did get pushed right. back, I believe, to July. But keep an eye out for this one. If you like the theme, mm -hmm. if you like worker placement type games, I think you're really going to enjoy this. So I, Fallout Shelter, 
the board game. I it's agree. actually a really good pick. Yeah. I like it a lot. The clear cards. I love that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I do have a question before I do my, my number eight, though. Do you think it's a good intro worker placement game for people? It's sure, pretty I think it's very. Yeah. I don't think it's very representative of what worker placement at large True. looks like. So if that's what you want, then not yeah. necessarily. Like, if you want to teach somebody, this is what worker placement entails. Right. Because it's not really typical. But if you want a simple worker placement game and you don't care about this whole, like, I'm going to start at step right. one and take you through. If you don't care about that whole, like, you know, in, in inducting people into the hobby. Inducting. Yes, it's an easy game. <laughs> it's hypnotizing people into the hobby. Yeah, people sometimes treat games like they're trying to, like, matriculate people into hobby, you know, into the hobby. And it's like, first you must play this, then this, <laughs> then Kalos, then this. It's like, you <laughs> then know, Kalos. calm down, just let people just play whatever no, they look, want. No, look, that's that's a thing that happens. It's like this whole yeah. wax on, wax off thing. It's like, yeah, start with the small stuff and we'll get you to the big stuff. But some people are okay staying with the small stuff. I but agree. If just that wasn't the case, enjoy what they want. we would never have Z on our show. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to be the resident. Z, Z small stuff, Garcia. <laughs> that, that ain't right. That's not, uh, nope, that's nope. not, a, not the nickname you want. No. All right, go ahead, Brian. <laughs> nope. My number eight is is Cosmic Encounter. Yes, I know this breaks the rule as well, but um, it's, it's, just, it's a rule I made for myself. I'm not in any way no, imposing it on you guys. You are an authority, sir. I, I feel like I've broken a rule that I didn't even know about. No. The natural law is broken, sir. But, um, Cosmic Encounter is just so much fun because of the the negotiation and sitting around the table with your friends alone is silly fun. Um, you can there's nothing better either though than pulling out a win that looks like it's going to be a tie and then you do something really sneaky at the last second to win it by yourself. I, I had that happen before where I convinced someone that we were going to. I guess it means I'm a kind of a terrible person for this, but I, I was convincing them that, that you know we're going to share this victory. We're going to we're going to win. And then it was like. Oh, by the way, I totally backstabbed you. I went solo. So yeah, a lot of great stuff with Cosmic Encounter. I agree. I, I think it's a great pick. <laughs> I don't even come close to disagreeing with that. That's fantastic. Right. All right. My number eight is a more off the wall <laughs> pick. <laughs> and I just see that my head just popped. There we go. Yeah, um, cool. Move my mic down now. I feel like, cool. like you're being cooler than me. <laughs> Stop it. I'm getting closer. Uh, my number eight is a game that has two names. Uh, both were published by Fantasy Flight. It was originally Titan, uh, Titan Arena and then Colossal Arena. Um, this game from Reiner Knizia, which he then remade into an overly complex spaceship game, which you should never play. Um, but Titan ah, Arena or like Colossal Arena, uh, you basically there's some guys fighting and you're betting on them. It's a very simple little game, but I think it stands the test of time. This game is almost 20 years old, I think, at this point. Oh my gosh. And I still really enjoy it. I like the betting aspect. It it almost gives you the feel of a take that game because you're making other people's fighters weaker and making yours stronger, but without trying to tip your hand too much as to who exactly you're you're betting on because you have a secret bet on one of the, the gladiators. I don't know. I find it to be a lot of fun. No, it's this good. came out in 1997, by the way, so Ooh. more than 20 years, Tom. 23 years old. Um... Oh, yeah. I was going to look up if this was from a different company first, but I guess technically it's not. It's just a bunch of it's. There are a bunch of publishers for huh. the same thing. Bah, 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 bah. I, sounds, Colossal Arena. Let's not. Big, let's not this is a deep. Let's not. That's like you're inconsistent. No, no, it's fine. I think this is not. This is not an obvious like. Oh, you you right. you broke your own rule. No, this is a good pick. It's a deep cut. I, I I like this game. It's been years since I played it, but it is a neat card game. Never played I it. I like it. One Good of the stuff. disadvantages of it, you have to play at least three. Oh, it's yeah. a great three-player game, though. It is it's great like really three, good but three I'm player. saying you can't play it at two at all. Right. But, no, yeah. right. Cool. Number seven. All right, my number seven is much like uh, your pick, Brian, for a game that's moved out of their catalog. And into somebody else's. And this is Fury of Dracula, in oh, this yeah. case, third edition, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is the best. I've played second edition, which is solid. It's good stuff. Third edition kicked it up in the uh, the pretty factor, mm -hmm. certainly. I think it's, it's better produced. I think a lot of the rules are a little more streamlined. I think uh, the combat is certainly more interesting, in my opinion, in the third edition, which is 
where the main overhaul happened was combat. Yeah. And uh, the game bounces back and forth between the players a little more consistently than the second edition. And I enjoy I think it's an interesting game. It's a game that, yes, some people say, oh, it's a long game and you like it. I do, but there's a nice development Mm. to it. I think there's a nice rising tension. The game arc is there and it's well represented and it, it's uh, it earns all of its beats along the way. Now, yes, sometimes you do have long stretches of, of gameplay in which players are just sort of marching around the board looking for a hint. It could happen. It's a fantasy like game. What's that? It's a fantasy like game. It feels like a lot of games like that. Where you, yeah, yeah. yeah it could, mm-hmm. You could have those moments, but generally speaking, you have forward momentum in that game which is why i like it there's something you are planning doing scheming hoping to get away with all those emotions that that go hand in hand with a game like this and and it really plays well so for me fear of dracula third edition is uh one i'm gonna be hanging on to i don't play it all the time but when i do i have a good time with it that's my number seven just give my number seven is the first, or sorry, the last released of the app-assisted or app-based um, fantasy flight games. That would be Journeys in Middle Earth, Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle Earth. I'm a huge fan of the Lord of the Rings IP. Um, it feels weird. Like, it predated the term IP, so it feels a little uh, like a snooty to call it an IP, you know, token. But uh, it's fantastic. Uh, what I love about it is the deck system how you have the deck instead of the dice now you you have your own kind of deck for your character and your role you use those in a couple different ways whether you use them for the abilities at the bottom or just simply the symbols at the top it does a really good job of uh you know you get your combat and everything involved but i also like the fact that you have a zoomed out map that you'd use for exploring and meeting people like tom bombadil and having pipe tobacco and in snacks and uh and then you can zoom in and have big battles too I don't know if there's any snacks involved, but it's it's a great game. So um, Journeys in Middle Earth does a really good job of handling the IP in a in a in a good way. Now I got to put spoilers on the video. You get snacks in the <laughs> game. <laughs> I didn't know that. You ruined it. It's I, know, I know too much. Oh, I just saw the thumbs down count just go. It's <laughs> all me. Well, that happened when number 10 came on. Don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, they saw my face. Like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm out. No, that's All a right. good pick. That's a, that's a neat game. I'm not a big uh, Lord of the Rings, like you said, IP. You, you like that theme in a board game. I like that theme in the movie. I'm not necessarily uh, uh, really, really into it. I, I play it, but I'm not super into it. I just don't like good The things. game design there is some of their best, I would say. Yep. All right, my number seven is a staple of many people's lists and is often probably many people's number ones. Blood but rage. it is not my number one. <laughs> Blood rage. This is the second time you've confused Cool Mini or Not and <laughs> oh, gosh. Fantasy okay, Flight. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, and this is the Big Daddy Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. Uh, Once in my top ten, or at least the third edition was, this one has fallen because ah, it's hard to get to the table. I feel this way that the same way Z does about a three to four hour game. I feel this way about a six to eight hour game. And yes, I know every time I say that, <laughs> no, someone we in the three chat hours. goes, we regularly play four hour games of this. But A, you're a liar. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. Ooh. No, but listen, every convention I go to, I time the people playing Twilight Imperium and it's never four hours. It's six to eight hours every single time. Now, if Plus you get down to four hours, that's fantastic. I get that. Um, but it's just never been the way that way for me. None of my friends would ever be able to do it within four hours. It's So if you get down to four hours, I applaud your superhuman skills. But for me, it's a six to eight hour game. And I just don't have time for that almost ever. <laughs> How like anybody who plays this game in four hours is probably just going around the table being like, go, 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 go. And that's a, that's an unpleasant four hours, my friend. I'd rather play <laughs> six if you're not if you're not going to be a jerk about it than four like that. It's right, a well, game. I don't want to spend the whole time I, defending my a, time. <laughs> those people are driving their friends away. It's the real B, time version of it. Okay, let me let me backtrack here so I don't have to make an apology video later on. No, no, Tom I'm said not, all people are liars who play this. I'm just kidding about the lion part. But I'll say this. I think that's the anomaly 
I think the game for most people takes six plus hours. Yeah. And six plus you hours like this is game? hard to fit in. You're everywhere. an anomaly. There's something wrong with you. I just reviewed anomaly. Funny that. You're making you're making <laughs> this worse. <laughs> I'm just rephrasing what you're saying, but I'm saying what you right. mean to say. But it's still on my top. <laughs> it's still on my top ten list. The, the fact of the matter is, is that if you can fit in those six plus hours, it is an amazing experience. It is grandiose. I honestly, no game has yet really been able to match it in that feel. There's no game that lets you build huge ships like this and just go after each other and technology that you can pick a different one every time and really different powers for the alien races that really affect how the game works. It's a great experience. I just it would be higher if I could play it more often, possibly, or choose okay. to play it more often. I still would rather play just three play to faster. four other games. I should play it right. faster. Yes. <laughs> come on, come on. Number six. All right. My number six is going to be higher on someone else's list. I assume two people's lists. <laughs> and this is Only two. Mansion to Madness Second Edition. Ah, oh, uh, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Much it. like uh, your pick about the uh, the Lord of the Rings pick, this is <clears throat> very similar to that. This is the first one in which they. That system, right, where they took away somebody having to run the game and they're just putting an app in place that will take care of a lot of that stuff for you. And you know what? It really works well. It streamlines so much of the process where I'm telling you, I would play a lot more of these epic, gigantic fantasy flight games if more of them weren't so dense that I had to chew my way through a rule book, right? If, if more that? of them were app driven, play more. <laughs> I was just on the home of fantasy. <laughs> Tell you would play more if we got Twilight Imperium the app edition. That's gonna get announced today, just to spite <laughs> me. Um, so I really like Mansions of Madness. It's very thematic. It's engaging. It's it's spooky. It's got a good yeah. atmosphere. Ooh. It works for me. I think of the there are other. Cthulhu style games I like more, maybe or maybe not from Fantasy Flight, but mm. none of them match this one's immersion at the end. Yeah. Really, I mean, it's, this puts you there. Turn the volume up, dim the lights a little bit, leave the minis in the box because they're stupid, and you're going to have yourself a good, good time. That's true. Man- Are there snacks? And madness. Snacks, optional. But if, I, if there, I, include tentacles on the menu, baby. Oh, why, are the minis, why are the minis stupid because of the stats you're saying? The minis are stupid because they are literally more fiddly than the plastic on the I, table is worth. I don't argue that the the heroes, I, I like them. No, 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 I'm lot. sorry. Yeah, yeah no, I'm builds. sorry. I, I use the heroes. I mean, I use the good guys. I just don't, don't I literally, like, I have an expansion for it. And in that expansion box, I just have all the plastic yeah. for the bad guys dumped uh-huh. in there, and I never pulled that one. I just used the cardboard, you know, piece oh, with the, the op- actual information. I, I use the actual um, mini with no cardboard because, like, you rarely, if ever, need that number. It's like, which one Which one do you have to do a horror check? Well, I ran out of the room, and only one of them came with me. So it's like, you know what I mean? What? No. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> it's not. I get rid of the rule book when I play because I, I don't. <laughs> I can't deal with you guys. <laughs> I don't need these numbers. I just use the miniatures and we make up any rules we want. <laughs> we draw the board. The, it's fine. <laughs> the app doesn't do that much. I mean, now you're just making up stuff. Anyway, Manchester Madness yes. is hot. It's where it's at. My number six. My number six okay. is, um, is another big fantasy flight epic dudes on a map based on an IP this time. And it is... Game of Thrones, a Game of Thrones, not Game of Thrones is based on the book series, so a Game of Thrones as opposed to second edition. Second edition, yes, it is. Yeah, second edition. Uh, fantastic, just feeling of a of a war game. This is kind of the classic example of what happens if you take a mass market game you grew up with and then put it through the hobby game uh, machine, and it becomes Risk becomes this kind of, but 
you know, in the Game of Thrones thing, the whole idea of bidding those power points to get a position on the track, which could determine everything, whether you win in fights or tie in fights or whatever, um, whether you're first in player order, and that can swing you an absolute win of the game. If you come up to bid and you get player order, you can go from winning second place to winning just like that. And I've had that happen multiple times where that power bid won the game, not the actual playing on it. You have to play on the map wisely, but uh, a lot of just fun times. It is a long one though. So it's kind of, it's, it's, it's not as long as uh, twilight Imperium. It's probably in the four hour range if you play it in really immerse. But again, you, my game group has played it in uh, in uh, one hour. Before. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's, that's <all. laughs> yeah, this one is very, that's a lot. it's that, it's that bragging. Mm-hmm. I played on my lunch break. Yes. <laughs> I, I, that's a weird thing, that bragging about getting something done so quickly. Like, oh, I play this game in 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, but I enjoy it for its its 90 minutes. You know what I mean? I mean... I a rack of ribs in five minutes? I can do it in 10 seconds. But, but you're going to die now. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't taste it. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I've heard this one is long, but I've also, my main, uh, you know, scare of, of not really wanting to try this is that i've heard it's really a nasty long game it's like very confrontational oh, yeah 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 oh my word Ugh. i can't well, people, i can't deal with that i want games yeah, but you to be get, sweet you want to feel that betrayal when the lannisters right. pay their debts right you know you that's what right. it is mm-hmm. my number six z has been counting my star wars games so this would be <laughs> number two on wait the, let me guess the, let me guess uh, number six. Outer Rim. I've not played Outer Rim, actually. I forgot about Outer Rim. Oh, yeah. then it's just three Star Wars games. <laughs> I, this uh, one, it's not going to be Imperial Assault, I don't think. Oh, that one's the highest. What's the other one? Um, not X-Wing. No. Uh, Is it Rebellion? There's some other one. Oh, oh, oh. Star no, Wars, no. It's Star Wars Living Card Game. No, it's Rebellion. Oh. Yes. Really? <laughs> That's it. That's I was like, really? really? It's Living Card Game. Living card game was okay, right? It's yeah. it's good, but yeah. Uh, Star Wars Rebellion is very fun. It's the slightest bit longer than I'd want it to be, but I still really enjoy it. And again, I I tend to like these games that take this big picture look. And this is the entirety of the Star Wars movies. And so you have the Death Star flying around, blowing up planets. You have yourself trying to take out the thing. You have Han Solo get captured and put in carbonite. Or maybe it's Luke who was captured and put in carbonite. You know, it can change some of the main facets of the movie, but it still kind of follows that track as the Emperor, you, the, the Empire player, using deduction, are trying to figure out where yeah. the rebel base is hid. And I like that little bit of deduction in the game. It's, it also has, you know, fighting. In fact, mm-hmm. the combat's on a weak point of the game, too. It's a little more complex than it should be, where you roll for space combat right. and then ground combat. But I don't care. I want a game that feels like Star Wars, and this one does a really good job at yeah. it. In fact, this one is probably the best Star Wars themed game there is. Although I heard Outer Rim's really good, I don't know. But um, I'm guessing Mission Star Wars Rebellion. I heard that the combat in this was uh, enhanced by an expansion; that it was made better in an expansion. I also heard that. I just had not played the expansion. I haven't either. Yeah, I didn't realize that. So this is the one out of all those Star Wars games that I want to try uh mm. it's only two right well i guess you could play more but it's really a two-player game it's yeah. two to four but it's two to four in a, in a sense that any two-player game you can make chess two to four Split if you want a to roll yeah that's the only way i play is four four-handed chess, chess. <laughs> four no. chess. zmb you're on a team you play all the pawns i play everything else at each year we argue for the longest time but whose turn it is to move that's it yeah uh I said this one i want to play <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars Rebellion sounds sounds interesting. This is one I'd like to try. Yeah. Number five. All right, my number five is a crossover, y'all, with oh. the illustrious Mr. Drake. I was, say, I was hoping <laughs> he said illustrious Drake. I don't know where that was going. Uh, is that his stage Tom, name? <laughs> The illustrious uh, Captain Drake. Yeah. Uh, Tom says this game is not valid for this list. I disagree. Cosmic Encounter belongs on every list, sir. We could <laughs> we could be doing top 10 yellow games. I'm putting Cosmic Encounter on it. 
I'll just say it in French. Le cosmique. Encounter. <laughs> Um, I, think I just offended it. somebody. Somebody <laughs> out there, I just offended. I'm sorry. I apologize. Not on the internet, no. Cosmic Encounter is good stuff. It's fun. Yes, it's from the 70s, uh, which is disgusting. <laughs> but Hey, I'm from the 70s. Which is <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> but at least Cosmic Encounter has aged well. It holds up. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I thought it took you so long. Jeez, that took you like a whole 10 seconds. Hey, my old brain is like slower now. Come on now. Anyway, no, Cosmic Encounter is good stuff. I The reason I, I did put it on the list, and honestly, I did think when I was going through the list, I thought, ah, is, this really a, is this really a Fantasy Flight game, right? I mean, I know they reprint it, but does it feel oh, wow. like a Fantasy Flight game? Because the other ones came before, right? Something like Kingsburg... They co-published, but they, but the other stuff came after. You know what I mean? That they lost the license and somebody else did it. That's fine. Um, and for Fear of Dracula, their editions are so okay. different. The uh, the original Fury of Dracula is like inspiration almost. It's not even a reprint, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Mansions of Madness, very similar to the original game, is sort of like the definitive edition of the game. It's so right. well made. It's engaging. It's attractive. It ha- it's it's had expansions galore. It's the edition of Cosmic. I know that the yeah. original one is the original one, but I I ultimately didn't really have any qualms putting it on the list. So it's a great game, and it's one that really does. No kidding aside, hold up. It's interesting. It's distinct from a lot of games um, still, which is kind of crazy, you know, when you consider that this game that came out, you know, what. 50 years ago now is oh my gosh yeah is still there's not a lot of games ultimately like it right that's 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 interesting uh cosmic encounter it might be the of its own for that uh my number five is a crossover with uh oh the illustrious mr vassal i was like who just did this yes! I was saying, yeah it is in fact star wars rebellion it y- you said Ooh. Quite. Three-way crossover. <laughs> it is a fantastic. It really is Star Wars in a box. I mean, the like you said, the combat's a little tricky, but other than that, everything else feels great about it. Uh, th- they managed to zoom out without losing the detail. That's one of the things that can happen sometimes when you do a zoomed-out game. You lose a lot of the feel of like, hey, isn't this just like World War II? Kind of, you yeah. know. No, this is like it really feels like the elements of Star Wars, and they've done it so well. The hidden, the hidden kind of re- rebels thing being just an aspect of the game is fantastic. So I, I love Star Wars Rebellion. It is my favorite. Yeah, it's weird. It's like you said, it's the best Star Wars game uh, based out there. Uh, I said no, that's not what I said. I said it's the best. Said. I said it feels the most like Star Wars. That's what I I'm said too. Sorry. All right. All I is remember that, is you saying that people who play this game uh, lie or something, like a lot. That's what I heard. Oh, yeah, people who play Rebellion are a bunch of liars. liars. I don't want to misinterpret what you said, Tom. Lying I'm fairly snake, certain, I believe. Is My right. number five is also a crossover. I guess that's the that's the name for this list. And it's a crossover with the jerky Mr. Z. Yes. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> you crossed over with me and I have a new title. What do you think it is? I believe, my good friend, it is Fury of Dracula? No, that can't be. Well, well, it's Fury of... Let me me start there. Did you discount Fury of Dracula? I did not discount Fury of Dracula. Broke his rules. And it is Fury of of Dracula. Now, you guys forget, I don't like that as much as you guys do. Okay, fine. Keyforge. Keyforge is correct. Uh, Keyforge, yeah. I actually... This game... Is one that when I first heard about it, I was captivated by the idea of it, right? The yeah. whole every deck's unique. And that I played it and I enjoyed it, but each time I play it, I think, man, I just really like the game. It is people, good, right? people get uh, caught up in the innovativeness of the, again, that, that every deck is completely different. But the idea that your deck is completely split into thirds mm-hmm. and each turn you can use one third of your deck and you decide which third. That's a really fascinating concept. And also for a, a Timmy magic player like me who likes to play with big bombastic stuff, that's all this game is. Every turn you're like, whoa, blowing, yeah. you know, 
blowing stuff up all over the place. It's I really like that aspect of it. And I'm a huge fan, like Z said, of the theme. I'm so tired of Grim Dark. It's everywhere. It's nice to have something that's the opposite for once. Dinosaurs and togas. I mean, you got to love that. And I love that new faction. Mm -hmm. And I cannot wait for these double cards. I'm, I'm really pumped about that. If, if I buy a deck and it doesn't have a double card, I'm going to be angry. <laughs> Those What's lockers? a double card? I guess. Anyway, I haven't seen no, that. No, no, no. In the I, new, in, in the new uh, set, they're going to have these cards, these big creatures that are two cards. Double cards. They're not, they're not even there. <gasps> what? No. It's made up of two cards. So I think, what? To, <laughs> I think you have to draw both cards to be able to play the creature. Oh, okay, I got you. I that is pretty neat. Yeah, I'm I really haven't. I also that. haven't seen the the dinosaur faction uh, oh, in, in an actual deck that I've seen, but they look awesome. Yeah, yeah I agree. The theme is just kooky. It's fun. Yeah. All right. Nice. So my number five, Keyforge. Number four. Number four for me is. One of my favorite area control sci-fi games. This is Mission Red Planet. Oh, I forgot. All came about out. This one. Mission Red Planet came out originally from um, Asmodee before Asmodee was Asmodee, and it was a nice addition. It was a good game. I was enjoyed the game. Uh, when Fantasy Flight picked it up, they reworked it a little bit with the designers and the production which was was much nicer they added in some ideas that the original designers had that didn't make it like adding back in the moon phobos around the planet uh they reworked the artwork of course a bunch of things but the core of the game remained largely the same and it is the character selection system from something like citadels utilized in an area control game it just works well yeah. it's it's straightforward every time I play it. And I just played this um, at one of the last conventions we went to. I forget where I played. It must have been Vegas, I guess. But it always surprises me how quickly, the how, how, how short, how quick the game is, how quickly you right. play. Blows my mind every single time. I explain the game. I set it up. I play a couple of rounds and bam, first scoring. I'm like, oh, bam, already. Bam. And then, like, bam, you like <laughs> Second scoring. And then, Wapalahungala. Third scoring. That's and then the, the one that always over. gets me. Yeah. Wapalahungala? Yeah, that's the one. Um, So I really like it. I think it's a punchy 45 minute game with really fun stuff going on in it. And, uh, you know, I contractually had to put a Bruno Catala huh. game on the list. So there it is. I did it. We played 15 me, minutes. Monsieur Catala. <laughs> That's my number four mission road planet. My number four is, um, see, and this is weird. I, uh, that's why I got you to clarify your statement a minute ago. This is higher on my list, but the other one feels more like Star Wars. This is Imperial Assault because Imperial Assault is a little bit of an emotional attachment for me because this is what got me into painting. It's the first really kind of big, deeper game I got into. Um, so now I you know, paint all the time because of Imperial Assault. But man, just it was so good that you it was basically two games in one. You had the campaign mode and then the really good skirmish mode. And, the, and neither of them felt like the main game with you know the other one shoehorned in or attached on i'm sure i'll get a lot of junk for that because people are like what are you saying of course the skirmish is the main mode and but well if i may uh, butt in yeah oh please please also, butt, sir. this is also my number four what so Cross yes over. i know look at that what? yeah i'll um, just i'll just sit here and cry internally guys go ahead and have leave. you never played if, if we were in the same room right now me and brian would be holding hands that's right in joint harmony <laughs> Join Harmony. <laughs> I was waiting. I, I, was gonna... I can't deal with this. Um, it's just so good. And then what's funny is the app came out to where you could do it app based, and I played it once app based. I just enjoy it so much in person. So um, I think the Overlord of it is done better than a game that is possibly going to be higher on Tom's list. So, all right. First of all, let's not speculate about possible futures. But here's why I. I like this one best because I do like the fact that it's two games in one box of the Star Wars games. I like the storyline, but I don't think this, the storyline is Star Wars. It's just not as Star Wars as Rebellion, that's all. But it's an incredibly fun game. Um, 
I think I lean more towards the tactical part than I do towards the story-based missions, if only because it's less of a threshold to get into. Like, we don't have to keep playing the same campaign over and over and over again. I could just say, here's all the stuff, pick some of it, and let's, you know, build an army. And it's like building an army and fighting someone else, but on a really low thing, and I don't have to build the miniatures. Yeah, no, that's true. And the metagame is good for that, too. Like, there's a whole lot of, you know, hey, here's a list you can go try. And you almost always have the pieces anyway. If you, if you were playing the game, you had the pieces for the most part. Yeah, so, yeah, a lot of fun. So, yeah, it's also my number four. So, woo, that doesn't happen very often. No, man. It's like magic. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oof. I think everyone just clicked the... Number three. All right, my number three is uh, not going to be a crossover because Tom hates it for some irrational reason. My number three is Blue Moon Legends, which I think is a great little card game. Blue I thought this Moon. was your number one. That's why I was... Oh, you did think this was my number one? No, it's my three. Oh, um, I forgot about your new number one. Never mind. I think I know what his number one is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah. Away, but... <laughs> yes. Uh, no, Blue Moon, the original Blue Moon, came out from Cosmos and Fantasy Flight a long time ago. And, the reason I, and it was a great game. It had large format cards, great artwork, neat game. You had to buy a kind of piecemeal, but it was, it was fantastic. And then eventually that went out of print for a while. They came back with Blue Moon Legends, which was smaller cards, better quality, but smaller normal size cards, but everything in one box, including promos that were really hard to get. They were in there. So that's the one I normally will default to now for one thing. If you are going to try to find this, it's likely a little bit easier and you will get everything. It's a fun card game. It's just a head-to-head card game, which... Uh, is not as complex as a collectible card game. And that's one of the things I like about it. It gives you a whiff of what that's like without whiff. having to. Oh, it's a whiff. Wish. It was a whiff. It's not a <laughs> wish. That's a little too much whiff. Here, we don't a whiff on this channel. A wish. A wish. It's going, calm down, Gollum. You're freaking me out. These teeth is precious. That's not good. That's a good goal. Um, now, it gives you a little bit of that without the complexity that comes with that, you know? Like, I I was just... Uh, what was the game I just got rid of? Um, with Moon City. Legend of the Five Rings. Legend of the Five Rings is a cool yeah. setting. It's a neat concept. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a cool game. I also never play it. Not only do I have to relearn the game to play, basically, you know... But whoever I'm playing with has to pretty much already be into that game. I can't teach that game to somebody and get them up to speed to actually enjoy playing with them. You know what I mean? So Blue Moon Legends bypasses a lot of that. I like it a lot. It's neat. It's my number three. Good stuff. Good I, li- I like that. Yeah, I like the whole, I don't have oh, time Tom, to help someone else. <laughs> you know what, Tom? I'm a, I'm a sick the wish monster. <laughs> right, that felt a little real. I'm ready. <laughs> Wish. Very strange. I don't know what's going on. We're, we're, we're derailing here, fellas. Number number three for me, no wish or whiffs for that matter, is in fact um, a very, very good game. It is the best living card game that has ever been printed. This is Arkham Heart of the Living Card Game. It is a phenomenal Boom! Phenomenal I like game. it. Okay. Didn't make Did, the list. Is that true? Ryan... <laughs> Have you ever watched our show? I, was I say, feel like you I haven't. Don't think that's true at all. And you and I are not playing a social deduction game with Z, since you obviously will be fooled. I must not know. I I, I feel like I, I like I, it all right, but it's not. It would have been my eleven, I think. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's, I think you've said that about three different games now. Which <laughs> no, I said that fifteen. That's fifteen. Brian, about this is the secret of top tens. If you hear one and you're like, I forgot that one, you say. This is my number 11. <laughs> You're a Drake, rookie. Drake You'll Con, my number 11. <laughs> Cave troll. Uh, so Arkham Horror, though, it does a fantastic job of uh, of the, the living card game idea where, you know, you, you can subscribe, you can do whatever you want, or you can just play the missions you have over and over. But it's a narrative-driven one, not a... Uh, you know, Marvel's very combat driven. It's very narrative driven. Like you, you do something in one mission and it's like, hey, keep this card for later. And you're like, when? And you're like... 
I don't know. But it's coming back around one day. And then when the designer's like, oh, didn't we write a card like that? Let's add something for that. It's great. You get a little comeuppance from it. So it's fun stuff. All righty. I, I agree. Uh, it's, a, it's a great game. I made the rules for my list, so. <laughs> and then I broke them. Break. I make them no. just to tell everyone else how bad they are. <laughs> I'm just saying, I could not decide between two games, so they're both my number three together. Hey, 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 hey. I get to make the rules. My so number three is all the games from Fantasy Flight. I'm guessing this is uh, a Mansions of Madness and that Lord of the Rings one. That is correct. You're very nice. smart. I could pick one over the other uh, they're because they're the it all, same game. They're not the same game, actually. There's some differences for, for sure. Lord of the Rings has a better plot. More, it has more elves. That's for sure. No, but it has better progression in it. But Mansions of Madness has more ambiance, in my opinion. Uh, okay. Lord of the Rings, you feel like a, a pretty awesome fighter, and Mansions of Madness, you're just you're just glad if the monster doesn't see you. That's so. True. Right, but I love them both. I love the integration of the app, and I can't pick one over the other, so I'm putting 11 games on my list. Because <laughs> My number three, Mansions of Madness, which is my favorite Arkham game, and Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth, which is my favorite uh, Lord of the Rings-style game. So there you go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Number two. All right, my number two is my favorite version of this game. It's been reprinted a lot. It's my favorite game from this designer as well. Uh, it is Citadels. Citadel! 2016. 2016 edition is what it's called for some reason. They should have called it something. They should have given it a subtitle. But it's like the deluxe edition, I'll call it. The complete edition, whatever you want to call it. So Citadels came out like in 2000, the original one with, uh, again, using that system like they repurposed for Mission Red Planet, in which you were drafting characters and building up your little city. Then they came out with an expansion for that a few years after that, like four years after, called The Dark City. Mm. And that was it. And this edition has the original game, the Dark City stuff, and new stuff that they came out with. It includes all of that. It has large format character cards with all new artwork, really nice quality linen finish components, nice tokens, nice everything. Again, it kind of feels like a deluxe version of a card game without saying that anywhere. And I just think it's a great, you know, final stage of a really fun card game. They've uh, evolved the rules to make the gameplay more engaging, to make the game less r repetitive with uh, higher player counts, just to add a lot of interesting new concepts. And you can definitely modify your setup to give you a different, you know, ultimate result. I like it a lot. It's uh, it's the Citadels to get. There's no question about it. So my number two, Citadels 2016 edition. I've just never cool. dug this game. I don't know what it is about it. I just, maybe that makes me a terrible taste. person. Yeah, that's no. probably... That's probably <laughs> You're a fine person. Oh, see, my taste is great for cards. Look at that. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was stupid. Number two for me is... In <laughs> that magic trick was so cool, I didn't even see what happened. <laughs> you totally missed it. You'll have to rewatch it later uh, and all that, <laughs> while you're uh, playing your four-hour version of Twilight Imperium. Um, we can um, do number two for me is two, right? Yeah, two. two. That's right. Is Mansions of Madness. I did separate them on my list because I do like it. Because uh, you did a career to big 10 games not 11 yeah, i did yeah I, did. <laughs> I didn't cheat so um this game uh, the thing i love about mansions of madness is the utter terror that it adds sometimes and i don't mean like true actual like i'm scared to go to sleep tonight but the moment of so when when the uh mythos phase happens and your character's name pops up you're like oh gosh no please don't do this right like right. that's such a great feeling so the other thing that puts this higher than uh, Lord of the Rings for me is the one-shot nature of this. You don't have to worry about being in a campaign. You don't have to worry about thinking, oh, i got to get Aaron and such and such and people back over. I can just play this. Uh, Carl and I can play this. We can play it. You know, you can play it solo. It's a great solo game, too. Um, although it loses a little something, but it's definitely, you know, it's good for that. I play solo. Yeah, I, I like it solo. I agree about the whole campaign thing. I think the pendulum 
is about ready to start swinging back on every game, seemingly being a campaign game. Right. You know, every new thing that comes out. Oh, this game has, uh, you know, 30 hours of content and don't even think about enjoying the last 25 (laughs) unless you master the first five hours of content. (laughs) Then why are they there? I have a game for you that no joke at the studio. We we got a game in Z that has, I think, six rule books. One of them, the, the main rule books, like 50 pages long. Uh, it has 1,020 cards in the box. The box is the size of Gloomhaven. In fact, oh, wow. if I didn't know better, I would say this game was saying, uh, we're just like Gloomhaven. It's like I feel like that's uh, on its way to me right now for some reason. <laughs> if you no, have a, no, no, a palette not... that shows up in your house, that's what's on it. Yeah. Let's pull it around back. It's fine. All right. My, oh. number, my number two is... A game I've liked from Fantasy Flight for a really long time, and that's the classic, or the second edition anyway, of Descent. Yep. I don't know. I mean, when I heard that Star Wars Imperial Assault was announced, I was like, that's even better, because I like Star Wars so much. But at the end of the day, I like the fantasy dungeon crawl. I like the originality of Descent. They did start with some pretty basic creatures, but as time went by and they kept making new versions and (laughs) expansions... They had to run out of the basic creatures, and they made some really cool, weird creatures uh, that I just like it. I, I like the, I like the campaign structure. I like that they made the dungeons fast and dirty. Right. You know, you play it for forty-five minutes to an hour dungeon, but the, the customization of the characters over time is so different. And this game, there are so many dungeon crawls that have come out since Descent. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. There's probably fifty on the market at sure. any given point now. And I still like the sense dice system. You roll the dice, you see if the range is there, and you see how much damage you do. And then you use the surges to activate your cards. It's clean, it's fast. Yeah. I don't know. I really enjoy it. So, yeah, nah. my number two, Descent. It's good. Good choice. And finally, number one. Right, so yes, my number one. Tom, Twilight Imperium, Twilight Imperium, Twilight Imperium, Twilight Imperium, come Twilight on. Imperium. Uh, living card game. Third edition, okay, I'm I'm a purist. <laughs> I guess I'm a purist. Like the third edition. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very specific kind of purist where the third time is the charm. Fourth time, disgusting. Third time. They, they got it right, you know? No, for me, my number one is Arkham Horror, the card game. Of course oh, there it go. is. Um, yeah, I think you had you, me you, down you, a minute ago. Oh, uh, I can't believe you, you... You need to take that... I forgot. I have a video I send to all new Dice Tower contributors. It's called Z101, and it teaches yeah. you about... It's a more lie. like a... It's a pamphlet. It just says, don't trust, don't believe. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um... No, it's. I, I think you're you're right, Brian. It's very. It's interesting because again, you. It's got the appeal of putting you in a in a story, right, and letting you play around in that story. It manages to swing between campaign and one-offs. You could do both, and it doesn't sort of shackle you to having to follow a story. Even and and the stories at the end of the day are not that long. It's like an eight chapter thing, right? You, you can you can wrap that up fairly quickly. It's not this monumental sort of endeavor that if you put the game down for a month and then try to pick it back up when you're halfway through the campaign. I, I can't tell you how many times I've attempted to do that with various games, and I oh, just yeah. go, I can't do this. I'm just starting start. again. And then, of course, I got to about the same point put down, <laughs> and then I have to start again. So... Yeah, in this game, it's it's that that problem isn't as prevalent in this one, and I just find it really engaging. It's it's neat. The the system is flexible enough where they've been able to do a lot of really cool stuff with, you know, where they can put you in different settings, yeah. give you different challenges. It's really cool stuff, man. Um, so yeah, I think this is one of their more open ended, interesting sure. games. Arkham Horror, the card game, my number one. Yeah, no, it's a great choice. Like, like you said, they can do so much with it, you know. But I don't know what Brian's number one is. I'm trying to uh, think here. It, 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 it was, new? 
No, no, it's actually it's very old. It's the Is it uh, IP based. It's, it's basically the name of the company came from this for the most part. It is uh, Twilight Imperium is my number one. It is, I think right now what was named Fantasy Flight? <laughs> I don't know. How is the name of the company come from Twilight Imperium? It's a fantastic world where you fly spaceships. I mean, obviously, that's it, right? Got what? it. I apologize for doubting yeah. you. Of course. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> I appreciate the uh, the affirmation there. Twilight Imperium. The original. No, no, no. Not the one that was printed oh. in the garage. No. Okay. Um, Twilight Imperium is such a good experience, whether you play it in two hours like most of us or whether you play in eight, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. It's a great game. I've never had a bad experience. It only it only barely knows Mansions of Men is out for me. Like Mansions is such a high game on my top list of all time, but it just knows it out because there's never been a moment where I get up from the table of Man- of, Man- of Twilight Imperium where it's not a completely memorable experience. Uh, I even, I, at Dice Tower... East last year, I I just taught it. I didn't even play it. I just taught it to some people and just watched their enjoyment like this. They it was kind of creepy for me, just be like, <laughs> look at that. But they did. They loved it and everything like that. So just getting that, getting the feel of that game is unlike anything else. There's no other game that that really. There are games that come close, but there aren't games that do everything that it manages to do from political to the battles to the you know kind of thinking ahead and all that sort of stuff. It's just, it's such a uh, fantastic game. Remind me never to learn a game from you. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle. Play that card. Watch this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. My number one. Before I get to my number one, mm-hmm. in the comments, okay. everybody is assuming that very high on my list, and that has to be number one now, is Marvel Champions. That is not the case. I like Marvel Champions. It didn't make my top ten yet. Maybe it will someday. We'll see. Had Roy Canada been making this list, it would have been in his top three. So we'll just put it there as an honorary. Am, am I wrong, Roy? It, no, it, it would have been in his top ten for sure. <laughs> Roy would have definitely put it in the top ten. So just assume Marvel Champions, fantastic, terrific. All right. But So what you're saying is uh, you don't like Marvel Champions is what I heard from yeah, that. That's <laughs> definitely that's how that works. Away. That's a, there you go. <laughs> My number one was a really easy choice for me. I love this game. It is fantastic, and someday Z will play it. And that is Battle Lore Second Edition. Ah, yeah. And I, and I this played one. Battle Lore. I, I played yes, the first but one. this one here, I mentioned that I wasn't putting them out there. Reprints. Battle Lore Second Edition. And Battle Lore First Edition. There's almost nothing the same between them, other than that I think there's lanes <laughs> that you fight yeah. on, and they have the word Battle Lore in the title. Other than that, there's almost nothing the same. Is they are combat really different, different games. Uh, I guess combat's similar. Yeah. But it's not it's not quite the same either because mm-hmm. they, they changed enough that Richard Borg was kind of like, yeah, this isn't really my game okay. uh, to some point. I, okay. I love it because it lets me do what I've always wanted to do, which is like pick a bunch of monsters and have them fight each other. Yeah. The, the original Battle Lord said that it was going to do that and then didn't get around to it. It has an amazingly cool simultaneous setup where you have half your army is, you know, you can put the cards out, but some of them are hidden. So there's nothing there. It's fantastic. It's really well balanced, I think, between Mm -hmm. the three factions. And the the factions are really distinct. I just have so much fun playing this game. So it is really uh, good. Yeah. Yeah, So Battle Lord. This this is one I'd like to play, just like I would like to play. and this one got away. The Nexus Ops printing oh, that yeah. they did. I have the original Nexus Ops from. No, 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 no. You're good. I think the original Nexus Ops is better. I like really? those pieces. Uh, I just it's one that I never fun. did play, and I, I wanted to. And Battle Lore, same thing. Did you ever play it, Tom, with like the the dragon expansions and all that sort of stuff? Where it's like single big unit expansions out there for for. Am I making that up? That is something, right? They had like a bigger like units that you could put out. That would come. That's for know. battle lore, right? right? Oh, well, they That's had a few for battle lore. Talking about yeah, yeah, battle lore, yeah, not Nexus Off. Sorry, it's up for battle lore second edition. Yeah, um, I have all of that stuff. I think there's not that much of it actually. There's not. It's not a it, couple blister packs, but they were good. Yeah, they're mostly just neutral units mm-hmm. essentially, and I'm I'm right. cool with that. Uh, it, again, it was the promise that was originally there. So, yeah, someone in the in the chat says I need to play the battle lore on. Uh, App the app. 
It's pretty I good. Promise, oh, that's right. I promise that's on my list. Half. That's going to be something I get to. All right. Is there any games that, that we should have mentioned here that people, a lot of people, like, said Marvel Champions? Yeah. Some people were sad that Chaos in the Old World wasn't on our lists. Battlestar Galactica must have I'm surprised been it didn't touch anybody's. I thought, Brian, you'd put it on. The, my, my problem with Battlestar Galactica is how slow it is to move on your turn, or what you do on your turn is so limited that it kind of takes me out of the game a little bit. I mean, there's the hidden stuff I love, but, like, the your turn feels almost inconsequential sometimes. Um, Birchian. And there was, and no one mentioned Lord of the Rings LCG, mm-hmm. which is great. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good games. I from think the Arkham game. just kind of like destroys it, you know. Um, so yeah, that's why it's not I on my think, list. I think it's okay, but I can't think of anything else that really should have been mentioned. Uh, Kate, did we mention Cave Troll? I don't know if we mentioned Cave Troll. That's good. Cave <laughs> Troll was great. Drake <laughs> on. Um, <laughs> What is with your guys' <laughs> hatred on Cave Troll and Playtime? They're, they're okay games. They're okay games. games. It's just... We, no, if, they have if, a if lot of games. Thumb, that are... Would you guess them? If I cover the little FFG, would you be like, oh, that's a fantasy fight game? You'd be like, oh, that's well, a... No, Space yes, because, uh, because when I first got into the hobby, yeah. FFG had just started that silver yeah. line of games, and they were all similar to that. There was that Mag... Was it Magdar? There was the... Um, Citadels was in that line. Yeah. So was there was a little car fighting game where you drove cars around and attacked each other. What was that other. called? What was that one? Uh, car fight. The, the, there was the Indiana Jones moving through the quicksand or whatever that's called. That's quicksand. actually a good game. There was Mutiny Wait. by there, Kevin yeah. Wilson. There was uh, Eric Lang did Senator. Senator. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Senator. I'm telling you, there was a lot of these games and they all had a very similar feel to them. Yeah. Um, and some of them I liked and some of them I uh, Kingdoms from Reiner Knizia. And yeah, so the desert or whatever the other Kinesia game, uh, the desert, yeah, yeah. So yeah, for me, for me, honestly, the next couple would have been probably Lord of the Rings, the 2000 Lord of the Rings, like the co op, the the Corey Kinesia, yeah, yeah. I thought you might put on confrontation, not Corey Kinesia, no, I'm talking about Corey (laughs) Kinesia. He's He's friends with with Reiner Kineska. Yeah, that's the one. He's friends with Reiner Kinitska. Reiner uh, Kinitska no, is fantastic. <laughs> Middle Earth Quest, uh, no, I played that only once, I think, and I didn't really it like it. But um, but no, this the original co-op one. Again, like I said, I I guess I'm just not a big, big fan of what I would call the, the typical fantasy type style of game. They might, I don't know what it is. Z? What about Lord of the Rings Confrontation? That's neat. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't feel... That, that one's a good. But again, it's not like the typical... As he, well, we associate now with a Fantasy Flight game. Big, sprawling, a lot of rules. And they do have their own sort of design language that is different from Come On and is different from these other big Oh, yeah. That's that another one. Games. That's another one we didn't mention was uh, the Android Netrunner. That's oh, going to be on yeah. a lot of people's lists. There's actually Android... Android. Android Netrunner, the Donald Vaccarino one that was um, Infiltration. Infiltration, and there was the Abstract New Strategy. Angeles, one. New Angeles one also was. Oh, that uh, came went like, phew, that Battle of Roke again game, was, that, that was uh, Legends of Fire Rings, but those were ones that literally, it was like, hey, we're announcing this, and poof, they disappeared. Battle of Roke again game was not bad. No, it should have been. You're bad. right, it, it went it away. It's like small box Game of Thrones almost. Like, yeah, Someone almost. here mentioned, hey, that's my fish, but I would never pick that. Not because I don't like the game, it's fine, but because like six different companies published it. Yeah. Some of them simultaneously. <laughs> it's really weird. It's it's um, public domain. <laughs> no, I don't know, I but still, I still think of that game as a Mayfair game. I know that's easy, but I don't know why. And Rex, Rex, the remake of Dune. Yeah, but with Dune being out now, I wonder if it just totally gets forgotten. Maybe, but the new Dune components aren't that amazing, and the Rex That's components scary. were amazing. So it all depends if you want to play with the Dune theme or not. That's really True. the thing. I liked Rex. All righty, folks. Well, that is another top 10. If you missed the live part of this in the comments later on, tell us what your favorites are. Make your own list up. Argue about it. And remember, are you going to tell us are amazing. What, people, what people voted for, Tom, or no? You know what? One of these days, you think I'd remember that I asked people that. Give me one second. I'll pull it up. You're right. We got to do the people's choice. 
People's that, elbow. That, uh, um, jumping to the dice tower. Can you do both Fine. though? Can you do both? Can you go back? Oh, I thought no, you meant like, like this. Like, I'm just time. surprised. I'm, not surprised, right. buddy, like that. Here we go. And then go Fantasy to this one. Flight. And to that, and then to that. One, two, good. three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight, nine, ten. All right, number ten for massive. the people's choice with forty-three votes is Marvel Champions. Uh-huh. So that's still moving up in people's favorites. Number nine with forty-five votes, Star Wars Imperial Assault. Yeah, number sense. eight with forty-six votes, Eldritch Horror. Okay. Number. Seven, with 47 votes, Lord of the Rings, Journey to Middle Earth. Ah, that matched mine. Number six, with 53 votes, Cosmic Encounter. Look at that. I got Number one. five, got with 59 votes, Battlestar Galactica. Mm. Number four, with 61 votes, TI4, Twilight Imperium, fourth edition. Number three, with 77 votes, Arkham Horror, LCG. Hey, that's my number three as well. What do you know? Number two with 115 votes, big jump there, <laughs> yeah. Star Wars Rebellion. Yeah. And number one with 135 man- votes, X-Wing? Mansions of yeah, Madness. Got to oh. Madness. X-Wing got That's... no love today. Wow. X-Wing was got 29 votes. Is it just past its prime at this point? Is that what we're thinking? It's old. moved into a different market, as in the people who like X Wing and stuff, they play it, but they're, okay. you know, if you play if you play with one of them, you're going to get destroyed. You sure. know, it's kind of that. It's moved into a different arena, I think. Okay. I was surprised yeah. on, on the People's Choice that Champions was so low comparatively to ten, as opposed to Arkham Horror, which is way high. Just, I mean, it's been out for a long time, and there's a lot of content for Champions it. Champions has been out almost a year at this point, yeah. though. I think Champions is kind of like recycling, though. People are like, you should recycle, and so should I, but I'm not going to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, I like Marvel Champions. Oh, no, I'm that not is not. Vote. Come on now. <laughs> you should like Marvel Champions, but I'm going to vote for Mansions. Okay, <laughs> let's let's talk about ones that got only one vote, because these are great. All right. Great card. <laughs> so we got Samurai. That's... That was a, a reprint they did. Relic got one vote. <laughs> that's okay, the yeah. uh, Warhammer Talisman. Legends of the Five Rings. That's an old game. Which yeah. Oh, the, the Star Wars living card game got one vote. Yeah, okay. Fury, Fury of Dracula, second edition. Someone's like, that's the, that's that's the, the wine. One. That's <laughs> the good stuff. Second. Did you call Descent, it the vote? Descent first edition. Britannia, which is a good game, but it's it needs exactly four players and takes exactly four hours or something like that. Oh, that's horrible. And, <laughs> and New Angeles got one vote. Those are the one vote games. Even for all the people yelling about chaos in the old world, it only got two votes. <laughs> it's also really out of print, Tom. Yeah. Like, well, really I know, I know. out of print. But again, it only got two votes. So when people are like, how could you not put on the list? It's not like well, I'm nobody else did. Of, it's not like <laughs> yeah. I'm super out of touch here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I only have three crossovers, so I am fairly out of touch with with Fantasy Flight, but you guys probably have a bunch of crossovers with the. I, yeah. I like to point out, I feel like you're fairly out of touch <laughs> in life. So <laughs> let's not, let's not. All right. Joking, sir. I was joking. <laughs> I'm sorry. See you, Garcia. I'll see y'all next time. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the that. one doing the apology video. <laughs> When I knock out Tom Vassal, <laughs> what's happening? No, I need to apologize. I'm what driving happened? over there right now. Right now. <laughs> six, six feet. <laughs> I was going to say, it's hard to beat somebody six feet away. You just use a long stick. Give me that two by four. <laughs> uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the rest of it. All right. All right. <laughs> End this show. Okay. Everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Tom Vassal. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks, everybody. I'm Brian Drake. Thanks for having me on. Do some magic. I disappeared. Look at that. Oh, it's terrible.